hello people so this is jay i welcome you all to the guru club so here in this channel for the next few days we are going to upload the videos that is covering the concepts from uh, wireless communication so today in this video we are going to see an introduction to wireless communication and certain basic terms which you will come across very often when you study the subject wireless communication so this is a very introductory level video so which covers uh, introduction to wireless communications and certain terms that is related to wireless communication so once you like this video press the like button and you press unlike button if you don't like the video so i will take that as a feedback and then i will try to improve myself and please do subscribe and press the bell icons so that you will get an instant notification whenever i post a video here in this channel so without any further delay let us get into the topic right away now okay to start off from wireless communications in ancient period so we could always see that communication has happened from day one of this world so people used to communicate but only the forms have get changed so in ancient communication the people were using the column of smokes to communicate and later on once the scripts have been invented the people have wrote certain messages on paper and then they sent the messages to pigeons or dog so this would be the ancient communication happening and possibly i would say that the first communication that occurred in world is wireless communication because these modes of communication does not require any wires to transmit the messages the column of smoke or the pigeon so now the modern era of wireless communication we are living in the wireless era of uh, communication where most of the devices and most of the communications have become i mean the at least the front end communication have become wireless so this picture could possibly depict what we are going nowadays and then the earlier technology was have been taken out and most of the wireless communications or uh, developed over a period of time so to consider an example so this is an example which we could uh, realize that wired communication your ethernet cable have been replaced by your wi-fi router and your mobile phone charging so earlier it was wired charging and nowadays mobile phones comes with wireless charging and moreover your headsets as well so these are the few examples which we can see that the development of wireless area of wireless in the day-to-day -day usage of a common man so here in this discussion we will be always considering the mobile communication area the most of the topics that we deal here and we discuss here will be correlated along with the mobile communication mobile phones communication so to get into the wireless communication so we will see by definition wireless communication is the transfer of information or power between two points or more that are not connected by an electrical conductor your electrical conductor i mean the wires so when you could able to transmit a message or transfer a message or signal from one point to other point without any physical wires then we could say that it is wireless communication so now let us see what are all the key components that is involved in sending a message from one point to the other point and here for the sake of simplicity i will assume that the message that we are going to transmit is already generated and it is already pre-processed and now it is ready to transmit so based on this assumption let us get into the components what are all the required for wireless communication so let us <coughs> see yes of course i need a transmitter so transmitter we will be sending a messages from one point it is as similar to a person stands in your class and he lectures so he is a transmitter he has certain messages to transmit and obviously i should have someone to receive messages at the other end so he is none other than the receiver so now we are going to transmit our messages or signal from the transmitter to receiver so here i need a medium to communicate my messages so since it is wireless we cannot go for a hard wire which connects the transmitter and then the receiver so obviously it, since it is a wireless channel your air is going to act as a medium so we are going to send our information or signals through air so that is why it is technically we call it as wireless channels so we will 
see much more about wireless channels and their characteristics in the upcoming videos but as of now just assume that the medium that is used to transmit messages from transmitter to receiver here in wireless communication is the wireless channel that we use so uh, the signal that is very much suitable for sending over the air is the electromagnetic signal and all the informations will take the form of electromagnetic waves with this basic requirements and these are all the uh, very few components that is involved in wireless communication and as i already said i have assumed that the message is already generated and it is ready to transmit all the pre-processing such as modulation encoding everything have been done the message is ready to transmit so now let us get into the basic terms which you will come across very often when we see wireless communication and we will try to define what it is uh, and then we will see each and every topic with an example so first thing which you will often come across is something called as propagation and few terms that is very close to propagations are what are the modes of propagation multipath propagation and one familiar term we used to come across is fading and then finally shadowing so these are all the various terms which very commonly you will come across so it is very much mandatory to understand what exactly all these terms are so once we are very much clear with all these terms and principles behind these terms it will be very easy to understand the upcoming videos which is relevant to wireless communications and most exactly the path laws as well so propagation of radio waves so first of all we start off with propagation what is propagation so propagation is nothing but the tendency of radio waves to travel from one point to another point in various parts of the atmosphere yes of course the tendency of are my radio signals to travel from one point to other point is what we call it as propagation and now we should have a question that how is my signal getting propagated when having air as the medium so to answer that there are different modes of propagation in radio waves the radiated signal from the transmitter reaches the receiver in three different modes so let's see what are they the first mode is direct propagation so here in this direct propagation we could see that this is my transmitter and this is my receiver so when you could see in in case of direct propagation my signal reaches the receiver without any reflection or without any diffraction or scattering anything it is what something we call it as line of sight propagation so when you have a clear line of sight between the transmitter and as well as the receiver then your signal will directly propagate to the receiver side so this mode of propagation is what we refer to as direct propagation and then the second mode of propagation is ground wave propagation so here is ground wave propagation when ground wave propagation happens when there is a considerable distance between the transmitter and then the receiver so when the distance between this transmitter and receiver increased and due to the curvature nature of the uh, the spherical nature of the earth we could not able to get the line of sight between the transmitter and then the receiver so in the in such cases we will rely on the ground propagation and most of the EM signals will get reflected back when they hit the ground. So ground is in dielectric medium. So much more of much more concepts are involved in understanding how the ground gets how the ground reflects the EM wave. So we will see all these concepts in the later on videos. So as of now, you just understand that this is one among the propagation mechanism. And the next mechanism is sky wave propagation yes even so this dotted line represents the ionosphere layer of your atmosphere so this ionosphere layer as we have already studied in your schooling this is completely filled of charged particles and since our signal is electromagnetic waves it is going to get reflected by the charged particles present in the ionosphere so this reflection will direct our signal again back to the receiver and of course this is not pointed communication but it will randomly turns down the propagation to the earth so these are all the three basic propagations of my radio waves now we will come to the most important part and then most important concepts of the propagation we do something called as multipath propagation so as the name suggests it is as a direct it has a direct meaning that we are going to propagate in multiple path but we should understand why is this multipath propagation happening 
So to understand this, let us have a plane surface and you have a transmitter at one end and you have a receiver at the other end. So in this scenario, when the transmitter radiates the messages and the transmitter radiates, since there is no obstacle and this is an uh, plain ground, you could see that the signal radiated from the transmitter directly reaches the receiver without any trouble. So here we follow the line of sight propagation or the direct propagation as we discussed in the previous slide. But unfortunately, most of the practical situations, this line of sight signal is not possible because there will be quite a lot of obstacle. The obstacle may be a building or it may be a vehicle running on road or even the lamp post that is installed on the road sides. So this, these obstacles will obviously obstruct the line of sight propagation between the transmitter and then the receiver. So in these cases, multipath propagation will happen. Like how? When the transmitter radiates the signal, the signal will get reflected back over here and not only the directed path, so each and every signal or every radiation that hits an obstacle will be reflected back and then it reaches the particular receiver. So this scenario is what something we call it as multipath propagations as the particular receiver receives the signal from various path means various versions of signal is received from different paths. So that is why it is termed as multipath propagation. So there are two important things that you have to notice or you have to remember when we are dealing with multipath propagation. Whenever the signal hits a particular surface, there are two important changes occurs in the signal. The first one is it will lose certain energy. The power of the signal will be attenuated to a certain level. Depends upon the surface and depends upon the power of the signal. My signal will lose certain amount of energy. So that is the first point which you have to consider and that leads to um, the degradation of signal energy. And the second point, whenever my signal hits a particular area, the phase of that particular signal is going to get changed. So these are all the two points which you have to consider when dealing with multipath propagation. So more number of reflections, which means the signal is getting more attenuated, it has lost much more of energy and then while reaching the receiver, it will have only a little bit of power which means it will be weaker and then the phase of the signal is also well, the phase of this particular wave and the phase of this particular wave will be different so each and every time it hits an obstacle the phase is going to get changed so now let us so these are all the two things which you have to consider when we are dealing with multipath propagation so now what are all the effects due to this multipath propagation so Putting into constructive and destructive scenario, there are two types of uh, effects that we can have. One is the constructive scenario. So let us assume that this is what the first signal that I received at the receiver and this is the second signal that I received at the receiver. Let us consider this as path 1 and let us consider this as path 2. So when these two, so you can observe that these two signals are in phase each other, in phase to each other, they both have the same phase. So when they have the same phase, a typical receiver could not able to identify or differentiate which is a, a multipath signal or it is an interference. So simply an ideal receiver will adds up all the multipaths that is received at the receiver end. So when we add up these two signals, then since these two signals are in phase to each other, it will get stronger. So this scenario is what we have it as constructive scenario so that a natural boost up for your signal will always happen in this constructive scenario. But on the other hand, we have the destructive scenario as well. So the destructive scenario occurs when the two path of signal are out of phase to each other. So uh, you can clearly observe that these two signals are out of phase. So when my receiver simply adds up these two signal, then you know that my signals will get cancelled out each other and I'm not going to get any signal at the receiver side. So a typical receiver will just adds up all the multipath components so that you can end up in constructive scenario or destructive scenario that is purely depends upon the phase change of each and every multipath component. So this is all about multipath propagation. 
So now let us come to a very important term that is fading. So before getting into technical context of fading, let us see fading with some real time examples which we have already come across in our day to day life and we will try to uh, correlate the example with the technical things. I think that must be um, easy to understand the concept. So generally what do you mean by fading? So fading is generally referred to as a gradual loss of any quantity or certain quantity or parameter. So gradual loss of certain parameter which merely disappears over a period of time. So in order to understand this even better let me take an example that we use in our daily life that is our gene span. So whenever you buy a new gene and not a faded gene a proper gene you could see the rich color of that particular fabric. The fabric feels too good and as well as the color will also be so rich. And eventually when the days goes on you could see that the same gene span could be able to lose its color. So it will get faded. Yes exactly. So this particular context or this particular concept is what we call it as fading. This we have seen in our day to day life. So there is nothing doubt in this. So how is this happening? So this parameter, so this parameter of the gradual loss of certain quality here, the quality or parameter here, the parameter what we consider is the color of the fabric. So when you notice the color of the fabric, you could see that the color of the fabric is eventually fading. It will, it will be getting lighter, lighter, it will be getting light, it will be getting lighter and by the days goes on, you will have a different color which is entirely different from the day one that you bought the pant. So what could be the reason? So there is no only one single reason for this fading to occur. There are quite a lots of reasons such as the hardness of the water. So whether you are washing your cloth in hard water or soft water that will contribute towards the fading and where you dry your cloths either in a shadow or on a sunny area. So all these things will contribute and similarly at what temperature of water you are uh, washing your pants so that is the another contribution and importantly what detergent that you use the hardness of the detergent will also contribute towards the fading of the pant so these are all the various uh, variables or various reasons which contributes in the fading part so i hope you now understood what exactly the fading is now let us try to put these concept in the technical terms so in order to understand fading over here, the technical definition of fading is the variation of the attenuation of signal. As you all know that the signal is signal will get attenuated whenever it travels a long distance or it is getting heated on certain material. So this variation is what we call it as the fading and the variables which means the contributors of this particular fading is it may be time. So your signal may get faded over time and it can be geographical position which means the distance as well and similarly the frequency what you are using. So these are all the various variables or I could say the different contributors for fading. And in wireless systems the fading either will be due to multipath propagation or weather particularly line. So let us see one by one. So here the first one is when you see so this is what we something call it as path loss. So path loss is nothing but, so let us consider the first one, the blue one. You could see there is a transmitter over here and then the receiver is placed very nearby to the transmitter. So that you will get a very good signal strength at the receiver. The signal is not going to get attenuated anyhow since the distance is very low. However, when the distance between the transmitter and then the receiver is increased, you could see there is a significant drop in the signal strength. And when the distance is getting further increased, then obviously the signal strength will be lesser. So this scenario you can obviously observe in the classroom environment as well. When the teacher speaks from the stage, the people sitting at the first row will hear at a louder noise and the people sitting at the back will be able to hear only at a reduced level. So because there are quite a lots of attenuation factors in the hall, the fan, the noise at the corridor and the people murmuring sound all these factors will be attenuating my signal. So this is what something we call it as path loss and a few more other contributors are 
the rain parameters. So the rain parameters you could have observed that when it is raining heavily outside you could not able to enjoy your TV shows if you are using DTS at your home. So all the EM waves will be absorbed by the water droplets in the atmosphere. So the rain will heavily affect the transmission of EM waves. So rain is one among the factor and similarly the frequency that you use will also fade. So uh, the low frequency signal or high frequency signal depending upon the low or high frequency signal you are signal may get faded accordingly and some of the contributors are obstacles which we have already seen in the multipath propagation slides so when your signal is getting reflected multiple amount of time multiple number of times then obviously for each and every reflection your signal is going to lose certain amount and that will eventually lead to fading so this entirely is what we call it as Fading and that's not all but uh, fading there are quite a lots of types of fading available depends upon the environment depends upon the times which we will take it further in the next uh, video but as of now we will see what are all the types of fading available in this video. So fading is broadly classified into two types one is small scale fading and another one is large scale fading and the small scale fading is further divided into two types one is multipart delay spread and the other side we have Doppler spread. So uh, large scale fading is again divided into path loss and as well as the shadowing. So here the path loss which we have already seen which means that the attenuation of signal will get increased uh, when the distance between the transmitter and receiver is getting increased. In some of the literature the distance between transmitter and receiver is referred to as uh, the separation the transmitter receiver separation as well. Shadowing we will see in the next particular slide and we will end that uh, concept over here, but this is not all we have some more uh, Types of fadings as well the multipath delay spread fading is uh, Divided into flat fading and as well as frequency selective fading whereas the Doppler spread is Divided into flat fading and as well as sorry fast fading and then slow fading So these are all the types of fading that is available or which can occur on the particular signal so we will see each and every fading in detail in the upcoming videos but as of now just understand or just get to know that these are all the types of fading that is available on the signal so next term that we are going to cover is shadowing so which is the last topic in this particular video so shadowing so shadowing is nothing but technically shadowing is the effect the received signal power fluctuates so whenever is received signal power fluctuates be, uh, because of any obstacle that is obstructing the propagation path uh, obstructing path between transmitter and then the receiver is what we call it as shadowing so to understand the concept let's just pictureize this we have a transmitter over here and then we will have an obstacle and then we have a receiver over here so obviously let us consider that he is standing at a point A and we will eventually consider the user is moving in this direction. So I have taken the each and every point as A, B, C and D. Now let's try to measure the signal power, the received signal strength when the user is at point A and when the user is at point B, when the user is at point C and similarly when the user is at point C. So what happens is when the transmitter radiates a particular signal, see when the user is at point A, there is no obstacle between the transmitter and then the receiver so that the receiver could be able to get good signal strength when he is at point A. And similarly when the user moves a certain distance and when he is between the point B and C, the signal strength that he is going to get is going to greatly affect by the obstacle present in between the transmitter and then the receiver over here so that uh, my receiver could able to still get the signal but with a reduced signal strength the signal strength will not be as strong as when he is at point a so when he further moves down to point d then again the signal strength will be increased so when we put this scenario on a graph like this taking a position on the x-axis and uh, received power at the y-axis we could see that when the user is at point a he could able to receive high signal power and then when he is at point b and c he could able to receive only less signal power and when he reaches point d the signal power is again getting increased 
So this particular fluctuation, so there is an increase in signal power and there is a sudden decrease in signal power and similar again there is an increase in the signal power. So this fluctuation of the signal power is because of this particular fluctuation is because of this particular obstacle that is present between the transmitter and then the receiver. So this concept is what we call it as shadowing concept. So that's all about today's video and I hope you have enjoyed this video. So if you like this video do press the like button. If you unlike the video do press the unlike button and subscribe for much more videos on this video. So thank you.